What's up guys, it's us Sebastian Jabasi here and I'm here with episode 3 in our Machine 101 tutorial series. Um, this episode is going to be about the software. Uh, again, I'm going to give you guys an overview of the machine software. So uh, to begin, I'm going to break down each of the components. So for right here we have our machine header. This is the header of our software. Um, right here we have our browser. This is where you get your sounds and you know your samples and all that. Um, right here we have our arranger. This is where our arrangement is going to take place. We have our control section where we're going to control sounds. It just, it just controls uh, uh, bass controls in the machine. Um, and our pattern editor where we edit our patterns. So um, to begin before we could begin, um, if you click on this machine button or this Native Instruments button, it takes you to a panel. Uh, it's going to be on your screen, and it's going to show you the edition that you're running. I'm running 1.81, for instance, and as well as um, uh, your serial number, just in case you ever need it. So, uh, just a tip, just in case you need it. So let's start. So for our first button, we have our menu button. This is particularly important if you're running this as a plugin, because um, you won't have this machine bar up here, um, especially on a Mac. You'll just have this right here. So um, you can do the same exact things that you can do in um, in a Mac, like we can run in full screen, which I love to do. Um, so we're in full screen now, um, and basically that's what your your menu button does. Um, right here, as you probably can tell, I op you can open and close your browser with that button, and that's a very important button because I love, 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 oopsies, I love, love, love to operate and make my beats in this mode. It gives, it makes me feel like I'm using an instrument rather than a software. This really gives me the software feel. This really enhances my creativity, and it, it, it's just a click of a button to change, and that's, I feel like that's really important. So um, that's what that does. Um, here's your BPM. Um, if you click on your BPM and you drag down, you can bring your BPM lower, or if you drag up, you can raise your BPM. I'm going to bring it back to 120, and also if you double click on it, you can change it manually. Just double click, you type in what BPM you want, and there it is. And the same thing, you can, you can do the same thing for swing. Um, you can go up, you can go down, you can double click and change it. Um, here's your time signature. Right now we're in 4-4. We're usually in 4-4, depending on what genre you're making or depending on who you are, what you want to do. Um, but you can change how many beats are in one bar right here. That's that number. And you can change your beat unit right here. But we want uh, quarter notes. So we're going to have four quarter notes in one bar. So um, here's your transport buttons. This first button is your restart button. This button is your play, so you can play your beat, and this is your record button to record um, into machine. Um, this is your control connector or your connector button. Um, right now, I don't have machine plugged in, but if I plug it in, um, if I had more than one machine, actually, if I had more than one instance of machine, you could connect another instance. But for right now, you'll just see that when machine's not plugged in, that's not activated. When machine is plugged in, it is plugged in. There it is. Um, you can you can control it here, but I don't have any other instance. But if you do have another instance of machine, that's where you do control that. I'm gonna unplug that. This is your audio engine. You can turn it on and off. It just basically turns the your audio engine and machine on and off, so you can save CPU um, space. Um, here's your CPU meter. It tells you how much computer memory you're using currently. It's good to keep that down because you don't want clipping. You don't want um. Um, when you're exporting your sound for it to be like cracking and clicking in your sound. Um, next is your mastering, your master volume, sorry. Um, this just controls the overall volume of your machine project. And that is your, um, this, that is your header of machine. So next, I'm going to take you to the browser. Your browser, I love the browser. Um, basically, this first button, the disk button, it enables you to surf and search through the your your computer's hard drive as well as external hard drives, whatever you have plugged in. So, very cool tool to use. You just go here. You can go here, select um, home. Let's say you couldn't find it. You're like, oh man, it's in it's in um, MP3 format. It's supposed to be in Wave. You can um, you can convert it and then just hit refresh instead of having it close, and then it'll refresh it. And you can go through your desktop files, all that. So. I have nothing on my desktop, so that's why nothing showed. Um, that's your disk button. Um, right here is your file type selector. Um, right now I'm in sample. You can select projects. Let's say you have different projects. Like here are my user projects. Um, 
here are your groups you can find different groups in your machine here are your sounds you can find different sounds here machine and filter through here um, here are your your um, patterns uh, I have no patterns but if I need to start making them because I, I didn't I didn't even know that you had that um, until I started making these tutorial series um, patterns I guess those are really good like if you're if you're always using f uh, four to the floor like you could just select that here and click and drag and then you'll you don't have to keep um, programming it um, right here is your plugins uh, effects if you have plugins and it has presets you can select your presets from here but I don't have any of those um, right here are your effects you can select different effects that machine has the machine has a ton of effects and here's your samples um, your drums uh, your one shots your personal samples whatever you're, you're importing into machine um, so that's it right there this basically is your filter this really helps filter these results that you get down here um, let's say you want you know you want drums you know you want to clap and as you can see it's changing as I'm doing this and you know you want a digital clap here are all your digital claps all these are digital claps every last one of these let's say you want a one shot and you want a buzz um, all these are buzzes <laughs> That's a weird word to say, but okay, yeah, and um, basically that's what that is. Right here is your search function. Let's say I'm looking for the Dracula kit or something in the, in the Dracula kit. Oh, for you know, I'd go back to drums and let's say I'm looking for Dracula kit. Dracula. Yeah, there you go, and it comes up with Dracula. Um, let's say I'm looking for. Let me click out of there. Let's say I'm looking for a snap. Oopsies, a snap. Here are a bunch of snaps. So that's what your search function is, and this is your results panel. This is where all the results come from. Um, when you find what you're looking for, you can double click and um, use it, or you can go to um, the next one. Just click until you find what you're looking for. Easy. Right here are your audition buttons. Um, I don't usually use them. I usually just click and hit the pad on machine, but these are your audition. You can change the volume of the audition button and whatever. Yeah. Um, this loads your sample. Let's say I have Snap Nomad. I click this, it'll load my sample there. This will play my sample. This is the volume that is played at, and that is your audition tools. Those are your audition tools, sorry. Um, right here, we have our edit button. This is really cool. Um, let's say I, I purchased a drum kit and I imported the drum kit into machine. Basically, this helps me file those drum kits. So I import my drum kit. Let's say I'm using this Snap Nomad. Um, let's say I want to re uh, I want to put this somewhere else. I um, can take let's say I don't want it to be in drums anymore. I want it to be in drums 1.5. And let's say I don't want it to be a clap anymore. I want it to be a chord. And let's say it's a flam chord. I don't know, it's not a flam chord, but let's say it's a flam chord. All I do is click that and then hit apply. And now when I search drums 1.5, chord and flam you'll see Snap Nomad in there. That's basically what that does. So um, I'm not going to save that because I do not want to mess that up. So let's move on to the Arranger. Here's your Arranger. Um, the Arranger is very important for making beats because it's really where you um, make the beat. <laughs> so right here is your project name.